from Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Hey, it's Graham VK4BB with the WIA National News. This edition for week commencing August 30, 2020. Criminal activity. This in relation to recent break-ins and thefts at a Victorian radio site on Mount Bem, also known as Mount Can. WIA is a licensee at this site. Cordia Proprietary Limited's marine VHF radio facilities at Mount Can, Mount Bem, on the eastern Victorian coast were the victims of a break-in a few weeks ago and again in the last few days. In the first incident, some 10 batteries weighing 62 kilograms each were stolen from the battery hut. The thieves returned and stole the remaining 38 batteries despite increased security measures being implemented in the meantime. Police did attend on both occasions. The thieves damaged fences, gates as they smashed and cut their way in. 5 Megs The 2015 World Radio Conference, or WRC15, allocated a portion of the 5 Meg band to the amateur service on a secondary basis. In Australia, the HF band 5351.5 to 5366.5 was declared as a secondary allocation for the amateur service within the 2017 Australian Radio Frequency Spectrum Plan. The WIA Spectrum Strategy Committee wrote a detailed submission on the implementation of the band within the amateur service licence condition determination. Reviewing the options proposed by the authority, the WIA proposes the ACMA's second option outlined in their consultation paper be the model used to permit the introduction of the amateur service into this part of the spectrum. The WIA view is that option 2 delivers the maximum benefit of this segment of the radio spectrum while not disadvantaging existing primary spectrum users. The view is supported by stakeholders comprising WIA members and interested non-members who were polled to gain an understanding of their preferred arrangements for accessing the band. Grant Willis, VK5GR from WIA Spectrum Strategy Committee. So, what are the next steps you may ask? Well, the ACMA will now consider all of these responses from amateurs and the industry, and if they find the case compelling... With luck, amateurs will see a draft revision of the amateur LCDs in due course, granting final access to the band. The WAA will continue active discussions, pushing access to the band with ACMA. We want VK amateurs to join with the more than 80 other countries in realising the benefits of the 60 metre band to the amateur service as a matter of priority. As the process continues, keep watching the WIA website and listening to this broadcast for further updates. This has been Grant, VK5GR, for the WIA Spectrum Committee and the WIA Board. So now we sit back and await ACMA's verdict, or in the vernacular of those who serve or have served our country in the armed services, hurry up and wait. WIA AGM may be on hold. The organising committee of the 2021 WIA AGM has recommended to the board that they consider holding a second online AGM. So as soon as we are told, you'll be told. But also keep an eye on the WIA minutes published on wia.org.au and on WIA front page news. And with other news from WIA HQ, Director Oscar VK3TX joins us. This is Oscar Vicky 3 tx We encourage young hams to participate of Jota programs around the globe. But it's Jota Online. The Jota Working Group within the IARU Region 1 created a new program called Jota Online and invites young hams around the world to participate. In these monthly gatherings, they are spreading the word that there is Jota Ham Radio, a Jota team consisting of active youngsters will present different topics while answering questions from the community. These sessions are also interesting if you want to learn more about organizing such amateur radio events for young people. This will be followed by a questions and answer session with the work group presenting. For more information, please visit www.ham-jota.com. This is Vicky 3TX for WA National News. 
From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. International news with thanks to IARU, RSGB, SARL, Southgate Amateur Radio Club, ARRL, RAC, NZART, Amateur Radio Newsline and the worldwide sources of the WIA. I'm Jason, VK2LAW. We begin this week's international news from New Zealand, NZART AGM, Saturday the 5th of September 2020. Yes, the NZART AGM is still going ahead at Alert Level 2, starting September 3rd in Wellington. The NZART AGM and AREC annual meeting are free to attend if you are a financial member of NZART. NZART office have had a considerable number register their interest in attending the AGM in person, and the maximum number for the venue has now been reached but a Zoom conference meeting is available for people who register early and will be limited to 100 online attendees. To China, CRAC announces this year's First Class C exam. The Chinese Radio Amateurs Club, CRAC, say the first of their Class C amateur radio exams for 2020 will take place September 19. In order to meet the needs of amateur radio enthusiasts who wish to set up Class C amateur radio stations, CRAC is scheduled to organise the first, 13th in total, Class C amateur radio operation technical ability examinations in 2020 on September 19. The specific examination work is undertaken by the Hunan Provincial Radio Association. And as a side note, unlike the practice in other countries, Class C here refers to the highest class of licence permitting 1 kilowatt on HF and 25 watts on all bands above 30 MHz. The lowest class is designated Class A. To India now, radio hams assist teams on ground with contact tracing. The Times of India reports amateur radio operators have once again been roped in to fight COVID-19. While previously they helped monitor home quarantine violations, This time they've been tasked with assisting the government in facilitating contact tracing via real-time radio communication. 80 to 100 ham operators are presently helping booth-level volunteers and ward committees carry out door-to-door surveys, assist patients and trace contacts of those testing positive for the virus. To Europe now, in Germany, security gap enables eavesdropping on mobile phone calls. Critical comms online magazine have reported how researchers in Germany have been able to exploit a flaw that some manufacturers have made in implementing base stations. Calls via the LTE mobile network are encrypted and should therefore be tap-proof. However, researchers from the Horst Gortz Institute for IT Security in Germany have shown that this is not always the case. They were able to decrypt the contents of calls if they were in the same radio cell as their target, whose mobile phone they then called immediately following the call they wanted to intercept. They exploit a flaw that some manufacturers had made in implementing the base stations. The results were published by the HGI team at the 29th Eusenix Security Symposium, which took place as an online conference. Providers and manufacturers were contacted prior to the publication. By now, the vulnerability should be fixed. Also, somewhere in Germany, actually just north of Stuttgart, V2X Tech gives firefighters the green light. Dedicated shortwave communications radio systems are now in charge of Ludwigsburg traffic lights. And it's a system of radio technology developed by Australian company Coda Wireless, which has been deployed, enabling fire trucks and rescue service teams to get to accidents and emergencies faster. 114 traffic lights at intersections in Ludwigsburg, with a population of 85,000, have been fitted with Coda Mark V roadside units, which work with the equivalent Mark V onboard units in fire trucks and rescue vehicles to grant them green light traffic passage on their way to emergencies. And wrapping up this week's international news from the United Kingdom, the Bletchley Park Trust has announced that following the coronavirus pandemic, it is to restructure. 
up to one third of staff could go. The Trust is proposing to restructure as a result of the financial impact of the coronavirus crisis. The impact of the pandemic has meant that from March to July this year it lost over 95% of its income, leaving a large gap in its annual budget. Bletchley Park is home to the popular RSGB National Radio Centre, which is currently closed due to the pandemic. For WIA National News in Sydney, I'm Jason, VK2LAW. Across Australia from VK1 WIA, you're tuned to the WIA National News Service. In VK6, it can be heard on the linked repeater network originating from VK6 RAP at 9am Sunday morning. I'm Chris, Victor Kilo 6, Fox Charlie Bravo Golf. News, talk and radio sport, here with VK1 WIA. AM Radio Operational News, it's Quantech Sport. I'm Felix VK, 4FUQ. The 40th Alara Contest is on again this weekend, Saturday 29th and Sunday 30th. CW Open 2020 takes place over the first weekend of September and is sponsored by the CW Operators Club. Three sessions all on the 5th of September. 0000 hours to 0359 UTC, 1200 to 1559 hours UTC, 2000 to 2359 hours UTC. Barry VK2BJ says hopefully propagation will be favourable and the bands will be filled up with global signals from all three ITU zones. But should your schedule not allow three session participation, please jump in for one or two sessions. The rules this year will be the same as for the 2019 CW Open, including the elimination of the 100 QSO rule to qualify for a regional award. Oceana Contest Voice from 0600 hours UTC Saturday October 3 to 0600 hours UTC Sunday October 4. CW from 0600 hours UTC Saturday October 10 to 0600 hours UTC Sunday October 11. CQ Worldwide DX SSB October 24-25. CQ Worldwide DX CW November 28-29. December 6 to 8, 160 meters worldwide. December 14, 15, 10 meters worldwide. Ted Powell Memorial DX Challenge. Four award periods each of three months starting in January of each calendar year and two categories in the contest, Most Wanted and Top 5. Top 5 you try and work the 5 Most Wanted DXCC entities, Most Wanted you work the Most Wanted DXCC entity. The DX entities in play are those Most Wanted during those 3 month windows. Complete details can be found at contest.fgarc.org.au forward slash all major Australian contests, rules and results are on the contest section of the WIA website. Oceania DX Award The WIA DX Awards Committee is pleased to announce the new award, the Oceania DX Award. Graham Alston, VK3GA DX Awards Manager, joins me now. Oceania DX Award The WIA DX Awards Committee is pleased to announce a new award, the Oceania DX Award. This award recognises participants who have worked and confirmed at least 25 of the 60 DXCC entities in Oceania. This award is targeted towards foundation and beginner DXs who may have modest stations, particularly wire antennas and or lower power. Contacts can be made on any band and any mode with endorsements for 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55 plus honour roll at 57 and excellence for working all 60 entities. This award complements the other awards available to WIA members and non-VK DX members via the awards system at www.wiaawards.com. 73 from Graham Alston, VK3 GA Awards Manager on behalf of the awards committee. Thanks Graham, VK3 GA. Now... DX Window, Australia. Members of the Wireless Institute of Australia are a QRV with special call VI110WIA until the end of 2020 to celebrate our 110th anniversary. QSL is via LOTW. Battle of Britain, 80th anniversary. Royal Air Force Amateur Radio Society, RAF ARS, members will operate GB80BAB 
a special event calls on for the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain between the 1st and 28th of September. Operation will be on all bands as conditions allow. SSB and CW. A special QSL card is available. Greece. QRP is SX-1 AFM from September 1 to 30 celebrating 70 years of the Hellenic Air Force History Museum. The station is on all modes, 80 through 6 metres. QSL via QRZ.com information. Hungary. HA-70MAV from Budapest until December 1. Celebrates the 7th anniversary of the Hungarian Railway. Activities on various HF bands. QSL via LOTW. Chile. CB33M until October 13 commemorates the 10th anniversary of the August 2010 landslide in a mine in the north part of Chile, where 33 miners, hence the call 33M, were trapped for three months until their rescue. QSL via the postal address given the text edition of this your WIA National News Service. PA Box 12096, Santiago, Chile. Denmark. OZ200EM is on the air until the end of the year, honouring the memory of Hans Christian Osterd, who discovered the principle of electromagnetism 200 years ago. Hong Kong. Special call sign VR2HK90 is QRV until May 31, 2021, to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the Hong Kong Amateur Radio Transmitting Society. QSL via VR2HK. For VK1WIA National News, I'm Felix VK4FUQ Enningham. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Hello, I'm Bruce, vk 3 F from sunny Bendigo. Worldwide Special Interest Group News, ATV, Dutch 144 MHz DATV experiment is a success. Veron report on the success of their experiment to encourage radio amateurs to use digital amateur television in the 2 metre band. A translation of the Veron Post reads, On July 14, the first message appears on the Veron website to announce the 2 metre DATV experiment. With the hashtag, not more of the same, the radio amateur has been invited to think outside the box. The telecom agency indicates that the amateur bands are there to conduct experimental radio research and that they are technology neutral. If anything has been proven, it is that DATV in the 2 metre band works and produces good results. 27 participants were present through the dxbot.batc.org.uk website alone. This is regardless of all listening amateurs who have participated. DXSpot from the BATC website was used by the participants as a talkback channel. During this experiment, two frequencies, 144.6 MHz and 145.3 MHz were used to minimise inconvenience to the other users on the band. The experiment was also limited to a duration of four hours. As reported on WIA News recently, the Melbourne DATV repeater VK3RTV is now back on air. Now 100% digital, leaving analogue FM to history. With more on this, here from Melbourne is Peter, VK3BFG. There are three separate DVBS inputs on 1246, 1255 and 1278 MHz using three-phase dual quads oriented towards the main service areas. The output power is 120 watts and is a two-channel multiplex DVBT signal on 445.5 MHz feeding a vertically polarised dipole array. Channels are designated VK3RTV1 and VK3RTV2. 445.5 MHz is the new WIA recommended centre frequency for the 7 MHz digital channel on 70 centimetres. 
Station scenes so far include VK3 XKA, BCU, GE, Triple W, KQ, CH, BFG, ATV, WV, ZSJ, and GMZ. The most notable stations were Simon VK3 ZSJ at 37 kilometres, Jeff VK3 GE at 60 kilometres, and Phil VK3 GMZ at 33 kilometres. Phil VK3 GMZ lives in Wurrier Lock, which is east of Mount Dandenong, which means there is a 2,500 foot hill between him and VK3 RTV. Looking on Google Earth, it became evident that he was coming in on knife-edge diffraction over the top. The K3 RTV is streaming both channels on the British Amateur TV Club site, which now has a very much improved service. The repeater also has a remote access capability, acting as a one-way input only type IRLP. This function will only be used on special occasions. Stations can register interest with me by email at pcossins at bigpond.com. That's p c o s i n s at bigpond.com. 73s and I'll be seeing you. This is Peter, VK3BFG. Worldwide special interest groups, final frontier. Faster than the speed of light? If you're a fan of science fiction, chances are you've encountered spaceships that use a warp drive, fold space, or jump drive. Unfortunately, the immutable laws of physics tell us that this is simply not possible. Those same laws, however, also tell us that near light speed travel comes with all sorts of challenges. Luckily for all of us, NASA addresses these in a recently released animated video that covers all the basics of interstellar travel. Worldwide special interest groups, IOTA, EU 028, members of the ARI Medina Radio Club will be active as AI5MO from Giglio Island, Italy, between September 3rd and 8th on various HF bands using CW, SSB, RITI and the digital modes, QSL via IK4RLM. EU-125, Mike DG5LAC is active as OZ DG5 LAC from Romo Island, Denmark until September 5th on various HF bands using SSB and FT8 FT4. QSL via DG5 LAC. Worldwide special interest groups, QRP and weak signal communication. New Zealand QRPers group. Wayne ZL2OZ of the group advises they use 3.690 MHz as the daily calling frequency and for their Thursday night net. 3.690 MHz is an IARU dedicated QRP frequency and is in the Region 3 band plan. So, all amateurs, please consider this and, at the very least, check the frequency is not in use before transmitting. Worldwide Special Interest Groups Radio Scouting Jota Jyoti 2020 Scouts Tasmania Jota Jyoti Coordinator Peter VK7 KPC advises all things being equal, Jota Jyoti will still be happening this year on the weekend of the 17th and 18th of October. But this will still depend on progress made with the COVID-19 situation in both VK7 and worldwide. Changes will probably include a social distancing around radio operating seating and other activities. Worldwide Special Interest Groups, Yota. WIA Vice President Lee Moyle, VK3 GK and the WIA Board are currently strategising with the YOTA, Youngsters on the Air, committee to engage the youth and younger members to experience the wonderful experiences and facets of amateur radio. 
the first ever IARU Region 3 Yota Camp to be held in Thailand this October has unfortunately now been postponed due to COVID-19 and will be rescheduled for a later date. The IARU Region 3 organisers had a wonderful program planned for the attendees with meals, training sessions, practical activities, entertainment and sightseeing included. Across the ditch, Summer Field Day is expected to be a big deal for young ZL hams in February. Jim Meachin, ZL2 BHF, shares that report with us and Amateur Radio Newsline. When is it actually considered fun to get on the air? When band conditions aren't quite the best? When it's part of a youngster's on-the-air exercise. In New Zealand, Yota Oceania is busy preparing for the Jock White Memorial Field Day event to be held in Wellington at the Kaitoki Camping Ground early next year. Organiser Benjamin Isaacs at L2BCI said that the HF contest is named to honour the former NZART contest and awards manager who is now a silent key. The challenge facing the young hams who will be participating on the 27th and 28th of February will be to work as many other ZL stations as possible and to listen for any potential contacts into Australia, even if conditions are poor. The call sign details are still being finalised, but you can be sure you'll be listening for the last four letters, which of course will be Y-O-T-A, Yota. I'm Bruce. VK3 Triple F. Who listens to radio? That go where you go, medium call radio. VK Triple K, WJ. VK2 Whiskey Uniform. VK2 Echo. VK2 Echo like Foxtrot. VK2 PH. VK8 MA. VK8 November Hotel. BK8GT. 2020 social scene. Miana QSO muster. Saturday, October 24 will be the Miana QSO muster. This one-time event will be held at the Great Lake Community Hall. This will be an informal day, so Tassie hams bring along the XYLs, partners, in fact anyone who'd enjoy a day out. Also, if you want to have a car boot, pre-love swap and go, then... Bring along your pre-loved and swap gear. Registration will be at the door for name tags and hand sanitation and they can take well over 100 people with the restrictions now lifted at this VK7 venue with plenty of room for distancing. In VK4, there's four coming up. Chark AGM, Lake Maraboon, September 25 to 27. The Tark Christmas Lights Tour, Friday the 18th of December from 7pm. The Tark Christmas Party, Sunday the 13th of December from 2pm. And the Rocky Amateur Radio Club's Annual Dinner, Saturday, November 21. Then in 2021, Tark Australia Day Long Week Radio Camp, Thursday afternoon the 21st to Tuesday afternoon the 26th of January. Wyong Field Day, still tentative, February 28th. Alara Meet 2021, Bendigo in VK3, October 1 to 4. And in November 2021, the Mayana Ham Fest. That's the biennial Ham Fest. So now, till we next meet, I'm Graham, VK4BB. Stay smart, stay safe, and walk softly. From Australia, this has been VK1WIA and the weekly WIA Amateur Radio News Service. On RF, we thank our rebroadcast team and you for listening. And remember, internet streaming and text of this news is available 24-7 at wia.org.au.